Hey everyone, let's get started. Welcome to my last video of 2021. Uh, I am Dr. Curtis, your digital doctor of physical therapy. Uh, thank you for joining me on this creative journey, uh, trying to share all things physical therapy and sharing some of my knowledge that I've gained over the last 30 years of my career. Um, please do me a favor and like this video and subscribe and share some videos to someone you care about to help me grow this channel uh, as well to become a patreon of the channel um, we have been talking about um, correcting a lot of our sitting posture that we've had to do this past three years working from home studying from home and uh, correcting a lot of that stress that we get just from sitting forward head, rounded back, and uh, sometimes we start growing into this posture. And this rounded back starts to uh, cause problems when we ask uh, of that area uh, motion, especially if it's in sports or if it's at the gym or working out. It's going to uh, pinch and uh, press against those end ranges and you can kind of sprain those areas. Um, and it's because we have uh, uh, some tightness, movement dysfunctions. So briefly, um, if we have forward head rounded back, um, the back posterior neck muscles are gonna be tight and the front ones are gonna be weak. The chest area, uh, these muscles are gonna be tight and the back muscles are going to be weak. So um, correcting uh, sitting posture, just stress relief. Let's see if I can go down here. Yeah, you guys could see me. All right, we're gonna do uh, chin tucks and then cat and cow to uh, relieve stress and tension in this area. Mainly it's for to reduce uh, lactic acid, increase circulation, and re reduce stress and tension. So we could all use that. So chin tucks, we're gonna go like this. In and out like this. And with all these motions, you wanna do them gently. If you have a hurt so good pain, then that's okay. But if you have any sharp pain, certainly you want to respect that and back off. And certainly if you have any uh, ongoing neck or back problems, you want to see your health professional to make sure these exercises are appropriate for you. Okay, chin tuck. Chin tuck. And you might hear, I, I hear a little cracking and popping when I do that. So chin tucks. Next level down, shoulders back, chest out. Shoulders back, chest out. They call this the cat back and cow. Cat and cow. Sometimes you could do it prone. It does have a little pressure on your wrist. Cat and cow. Cat and cow. Cat and cow. Again. Chin tuck. We're going to add a little stretch now. Hand at the back of the head. Chin tuck and roll. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And relax. Rick, notice I'm not uh, pressing down. I'm going to do the chin tuck first and roll. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 
you want to get a little more aggressive you use two hands I have a little more strength that way chin tuck and roll try to think uh, segmentally avoiding pressing down chin tuck and roll and my pull my force is actually out this way chin tuck and roll oh feels good chin tuck and roll all right cat and cow and did i mention um that we do these repetitively to mainly increase circulation decrease lactic acid and decrease stress and tension. You certainly want to do this every 15 minutes or so that you're sitting. Uh, you could add rotations. A little more intermediate. You can probably place your hand on the opposite knee. Press a little bit more. If you notice, I don't have to talk as loud anymore because I got a Christmas present. And that is, uh, my, I asked my son for a wireless mic. And so I don't have to yell to the camera anymore. So you can easily help hear me whisper uh, the counts as well. Okay, so cat and cow rotation, so the spine. So these few exercises are going to relieve stress and tension, decrease lactic acid, increase circulation. Okay. So now stretches for this area. We already talked about the chin tuck and roll. Now this area here, the pec area, what you want to do is I always call it the door uh, hinge stretch. That is uh, any door that you go by, just grab it. Okay. Of your cubicle. Um, and you're going to just pull, have that, uh, grab the door, turn, and it's going to pull and stretch your pec area, all those muscles there. Sorry, I don't have a post right here, but, uh, here I'll grab, uh, the handle of my bed there. Turn, oh. then move away this way. This is actually a good uh, position to demonstrate this. The higher your arm is above 90 degrees, the more you can have pinching and impingement problems. So certainly start below 90 degrees, which I am. If you want to stretch and pull, this pec area you can or you could just turn away hold for a good 10 seconds or so and relax turn and you'll find that this feels really good another easy way to do this is supine uh, simply on your back arms again you don't want it necessarily above you don't want it above 90 degrees maybe below 90 degrees and just stretch out this way and and uh, it might seem simple but uh, if you have a kyphosis or a round back that's kind of stuck that way and if you look in the mirror and if it looks a little bit of exaggerated uh, permanent curve they call that a kyphosis 
So if you uh, lay on your back, this uh, convexity of your spine against a hard surface of the ground is going to stretch just with gravity, just like this. Okay, so here I am on my therapy table and then stretching this way. And I could actually feel some tightness here just with gravity pulling. So I am kind of finding my tightness, uh, you know, with a little bit of a abduction or raising up and then a little bit of external rotation and I find in some tightness and I'm just letting gravity uh, give that a nice 10 second 20 second stretch but this is a, a good beginning position um, once you're standing up you can do what's called a, called a corner stretch it's like you're uh, got in trouble and you have to face the corner Put your hand on either side of the corner facing you like this and then you step into it in kind of a walk stance a lunge position and you lean into it and you have the stop of the wall to pull your arms back so that's a little more aggressive than just using gravity next is we're going to get a towel roll if you're on the ground and you have a pretty firm hardwood or cement surface all you have to do is uh, flatten it up like this and that's going to give you a pretty adequate stretch right there okay just put that in the roundness of your back <sighs> right there and knees up to support your low back this will tend to arch your back so knees up to support your low back and then hands together, thumbs up like this is in the neutral position of your shoulder. And we always like that. And oh, we're going to stretch over that towel. And it's pretty cool the gadgets that we have here. I'm able to control my camera on my iPhone with my watch. I see my head's slightly out of the picture. But you can see my knees are up. And I'm going to increase the intensity of this a little bit because the treatment table that I am on, it gives a little bit. So if you're on a bed or a couch, it's going to give a lot. So. I recommend you plop on the ground, but I'm going to increase the intensity of this a little bit by rolling it up kind of tight, maybe about that much, and then putting the roundness of my back on there. There we go. Knees up support the low back and oh I just had I just had a cavitation what's a cavitation I just cracked my back with the uh, with the towel roll and that gave a nice little release of tension and you could put it on certain segments as well of your spine of the roundness of your spine to get different levels if you're sore on the left or the right you could also do it vertical and work a certain side so there we go we've done chin tucks cat and cow pec stretch the door pull stretch sometimes sometimes I do it like this I do a lumbar rotation I bring up a knee I hold it down and then I pin this one 
external rotation just like gravity pull that down so I'm kind of getting a two for a lumbar stretch lumbar rotation actually I'm getting a three for get my hip hip glute stretch lumbar rotation stretch thoracic spine rotation and then here uh, my pec opposite pec area this is a really good one here that's a bonus I didn't do a specific one on this one I'll demonstrate on the other side knee up rotate arm about 90 degrees rotate here and I like to start low and then work my way up in my shoulder range and if I touch the ground that's good if I'm kind of hanging off the ground that means I need more there's some limitation right there all right let's move on to making some changes here so strengthening this area I said if you tighten the back you're weak in the front so we need to do a chin tuck roll against gravity and that's going to help the deep flexors of the spine so this is a good starting position knees up this is called hook line so chin tuck and lift up against gravity one, two, three, four, five, five to ten, and down. Now, since we rarely do these, you're gonna get fatigued very fast. So tuck and roll, and you're welcome to use a hand behind the neck just to support your head, the weight of your head a little bit. Chin tuck and roll. Deep flexors of the neck. Now we could. Uh, go straight into your abdominal uh, crunchy chin tuck roll shoulders up upper body up and gaze is still up this way so certainly avoid the traditional sit-up hyperflexion okay so chin tuck elevate the head that's all you need to do chin tuck elevate the head shoulders for the crunch and you can see my stomach vibrating in protest now if you do a full sit-up does it do your abs sure it does your abs um, but it also you're doing half and half half your abs and half your uh, hip flexors so And it puts a lot of levering stresses on your low mm, Back right there So certainly if you have back problems if you keep your low back pinned to the ground uh, You'll be much better so chin tuck Roll, crunchy. Two, three, four, five. Chin tuck, roll, crunchy. Two, three, four, five. Okay, let's move on. So this video is not too long. My second favorite exercise is strengthening the glutes. Um, very easy to go from your abs to your glutes. So a bridge. Whatever's off the ground is working. Your glutes, your hams a little bit. And down. I like to count five. Up, one, two, three, four, five. And down. The faster you count, the easier, more beginning it is. 
make sure your, knee, your feet are up to a good 90 degrees, okay, as far as you can go. If they're hanging out here, it's going to kick in your hams more. You can get a cramp while you do this, okay? So make sure they're up, your knees are up, a good 90 degrees. Lift up, one, two, three, four, five, and down. It helps if you kind of isometrically, isometrically uh, tighten your glutes as well. Don't, because uh, what can happen is your hamstrings could do all the work and then your glutes could kind of be just kind of flabby. Uh, that's what's called hamstring biased. And so, and uh, I'm of the belief that it leads to chronic hamstring tightness and uh, associated problems there. So tighten your glutes. Lift up, one, two, three, four, five, and down. Your glutes lift up one two three four five get in some nice paraspinals of your back as well so an intermediate uh, uh, hip lift and bridge is to lift up and then march count one two three, four, and down. And that uh, increases the exercise by like 100%. <laughs> okay, you lift up. One, two, three, four. And you might just start with one, two. Lift up, one, two, and then down. Lift up, one, two, and then down, lift up, one, two, and then down. So when we do the marching, it, uh, we not only do our glutes and paraspinals, but we get our rot rotatory muscles, or what's called our multifidi, our stabilizers of our spine, that keep us from falling down. Those are our back muscles that we need for good back health. And if you look online, these are called, uh, these could be called dead bug exercises too. Progress them to kicks a little harder. And then for you uh, muscle builders, who want a challenge you can actually do one leg and then just do kind of unilateral my left glute my right glute doing the length of my leg the farther out it is the harder it is all right so there's some great exercises there and the last two are the paraspinal stretch. Hold it back. Chin touch. Hold one, two, three, and down. Chin tuck. One, two, three, and down. Make sure you're just not looking up toward straight that way. Hyperextending your chin tuck. And down. Chin tuck. Chin tuck. Shoulders back. Elevating the back. Great exercise. Um, all the exercises I showed you are for motion, circulation, decreased lactic acid. But we really need to strengthen the muscles even after you uh, stretch them and gain more flexibility. If you don't have the strength to maintain it, uh, you're not going to be able to hold it very much. So chin tuck. 
the shoulders back. Shoulder pinch. Chin tuck. Shoulder pinch. And if you, the higher you go, you just get more paraspinal muscles. But if you want to do the chin tuck and just your upper back, that's fine. Chin tuck, upper back, paraspinals. Chin tuck, rhomboids, upper back, low back. And one more chin tuck, shoulder pinch, rhomboids, lower paraspinals, and relax. Okay, I think the only thing I didn't show you was a shoulder clock and a hamstring stretch. We're going to end on a hamstring stretch, so that's all you need is a little stool. Put your foot on it, bend your ankle up toward your nose, a straight back, and then lean into it. If you have tight hamstrings like I do, you don't need to plop it up on a high area and lean into it. You can see I am stretching my hamstring, but then I start stretching my SI joint, my hip joint, and my back, thinking I'm getting farther and farther touching my toe. See that? That's a lot of extra stress on the back. So you just need a, need a small stool. Bend your ankle up toward your nose. Straight back. And then you're folding at the hip, maintaining this low arch in your back. And that's how you stretch your hamstring. You could also do it sitting as well. That's standing. So even at work, you can sit at the edge of your workstation, put your foot out. I'd suggest sitting at the edge, putting your foot out, bend your ankle up toward your nose, straighten it out, straight back, lean into it, hold for a good one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, at least ten to twenty. Bend your ankle up toward your nose, arch back, lean forward, maintaining that arch in your low back. So you're just isolating your hamstring. Hold that for five to 10 seconds. And stretching just feels good. Because if we don't stretch, if we don't move, we just end up conforming to uh, our sitting position. So that's going to increase a lot of stress and tension of the back. And if you move every 15 minutes, you're going to feel a lot better. Decrease that lactic acid, increase the circulation, work on your flexibility, uh, work on your stretching and cracking, popping is fine. And then adding a little bit of strengthening as well. So, hey, thanks for joining me. It's been fun. Happy, uh, happy New Year 2022. And we look forward to much more health and happiness for you and certainly the world. And uh, uh, thanks for joining me. I'm Dr. Curtis, your digital doctor of physical therapy. We'll see you next time.